Hello everyone, in today's video we will create a web application with Streamlit in Python that will allow you to explore different machine learning models. It will allow you to upload your own data, select the features that you want to use in your models, it will allow you to train different models and then it will visualize results of the predictions for you. And we will also deploy this to a publicly available URL. This means that you will be able to post the link in your CV and that everyone will be able to see it. Let's get started. We are here in Visual Studio Code and the first thing you need to do is set up your virtual environment. And this is so that you can work with many different projects uh, with various dependencies and different versions of these dependencies. So if you do not have it already installed, of course you need Python, right? If you don't have Python, go to Google, say download Python, download the newest version. Python comes with pip. Pip is a part, uh, Python package manager that allows you to install different Python packages. One of these packages is ppnv. So what you have to say is in your Visual Studio code, in your terminal, just say pip install ppnv. Right, I already have it, so I will now not run it. But if you don't have it, just say pip install ppnv, hit enter and wait for it to be installed. Now, after pip env is installed, we need to install other dependencies that we will need for the project. We will now install all of them so that we don't have to care about this later. What you want to say is ppnv install streamlit. This is our basic package that we'll use to create the web application, pandas, scikit-learn for machine learning, matplotlib, Seaborn and Plotly for Charles and then NumPy. Hit enter and I will see you once this is installed. Now the dependencies were installed. You should have a pip file and pip file.log now created in the folder. One more thing you need to do is you need to say ppnv shell in order to activate the virtual environment that you have just now created. Okay, let's start writing our code and let's test if everything here works. So what I will say is import streamlit as streamlit as st. And then I will just say st title. This will allow us to create a web application uh, just with a title. And I will call it machine learning model explorer. I will save it and then you have to run streamlit run app.py and if you have done everything correctly a browser should open and you should be able to see the machine learning model explorer as we are able to see right now okay this, if you see this this has mean that up until this point everything has went well for you next step is that we create our navigation menu so let's say st sidebar dot Title. let's say navigation which of course should be a dot not a comma this will create you a nice sidebar and we'll call it navigation now for the sidebar we want to have different options let's call the options home then upload data to so that we will be able to upload our data select features model training and results. These will be the different tabs that we'll be able to select in our application. Now, what our selection will be, will be defined by saying st.sidebar.radio. And this, in this radio, first we need to give it a title. So let's say go to, and then we need to give it different options. So now if you save it, what you should see in your application is something like this. If you refresh your application, now you should see like a nice sidebar panel and here our radio selection where you are able to select um, different uh, pages here. Now, in the next step, we will just create the content that will be displayed on the screen with the selection of every tab here. So in order to do that, we will be creating a number of if statements 
And I'll just say here, if selection e equals home, and the name has to correspond to this option right here, we will write, so I will say st.write, and then let's make it a multi-line string. And let's say three hash signs, just to make it a bolder. Welcome to the ML model explorer. And then I will say that this app allows you to now upload your data set, upload your data set. We'll also say, let's say select features and target variables. Choose and train different ML models and then evaluate and visualize model performance. And this is essentially all the features that we need to now create. And this is everything that you want to display when we select the home subpage. Now, if we select upload data, and make sure that it fits exactly to what you have set here. Maybe an improvement possibility is to work with some kind of enums here. So if you upload your data or if you select the upload data option, what we want to have is, let's say we begin with a header. It should be a st.header. That will say upload your data set. Afterwards, we will save our uploaded file and the uploaded file you create or the possibility to upload a file you create by saying st for streamlet.file uploader. This will create you a nice button where you will be able to select the file that you want to upload. Okay, upload a CSV file and then let's just say here that the type must be a CSV file. Because we will be working with, uh, took too much, we will be working with CSV. So now if the uploaded file is not none, so if a file has been uploaded, what we will do is we will save it into a data frame. And to save something as a data frame here at the top, let's say that we want to import pandas as PD. PD it will become an alias for pandas. So the data frame is equals to pd.readCSV. So this is a pandas function that allows us to read a CSV into a data frame and then just upload it file. Okay, now next step, we will create a short data preview. Preview. So I'll just say st write, and here hash hash data preview, preview, st dot write, or sorry, not write, but we will say st data frame, and Streamlit is nicely integrated with the data frames. It has like a built-in feature to display the data frames nicely. I'll just say df.head that we see the first five rows by default. And one more thing, we need to save this data frame in our session state, that it is kept in the session state when we click around on the in the application, that it's not gone with a change of the navigation menu selection. Okay, so now if you have done everything correctly, your application after you refresh this, first of all, should be running. Now we can see our description in home here working and we also can see our upload data working. Uh, let me get some test data that I will also put in your, or I will put the link to it in the description down below. Here I have a testing data set. I will just select it. It's a very simple, well-known, data set of like some values for different flowers. It really doesn't matter what we select here. For now, it's just to check, okay, here we can see this. It is directly working, it is displaying our data. Let's go back to our code. I also copied the file here if we need it also to test it in the future. Good, we have our upload of the data already. We have our 
home page ready. Now if we select, so that if selection is equals or equals equals, select, well, let's copy it from here. So we do not make a mistake. Let's say select features. What we will do is first off, let's start with a header that the user knows where they are. Select features and target variable. So in this tab, we will allow the user to select what is the target variable of the models that we will train and what are the features that should be used. So uh, before we do that, we need to check if a data set has been uploaded, right? Because if not, of course you cannot select features, you cannot select any target variables. So if the data frame is not in a ST session state, right? So this is exactly, if this has not been executed inside of this if statement, we will do, we will display a warning. We will just display a warning saying, please upload a data set first. If it's not the case, so if the DF is in session state, so the data frame has been uploaded, what we will do is read it. So we will just say DF session state DF. Sorry, not parentheses, but square brackets. Of course, we will read all the columns, df.columns.toolist, and then we will allow the user to select a target variable and the features that the user wants to use. But important is for me that we will create it so that it only allows the user to select numerical features, so continuous features. So we will not allow a user to select any categorical features because this is not something that in this version of our application will be handled. There are a number of ways you can do that. What I will do is here in, for this data frame where we are saying dot columns dot to list, what I will do is I will say dot select D types and in brackets here I would say exclude and then categorical and object. So essentially object very often represents strings. A categorical is just a data frame um, column category. Next thing you want to do is make your target and feature selection working. So let's say target is equal to st.select box. This will just give you a nice box to select something, we will say select target variable. And then here we will be selecting this out of all of our columns. And here features equals st.multi select, select features. And here we will be selecting it. We will be selecting it from all columns. However, we don't want to what has been selected in the target before. Therefore, we will just use very shortly a list comprehension. In Python, you do it very, it's a very nice little trick to know. You are just saying for every element of the all columns, right? So I just call it call. So for every element, essentially in all columns, we are saying, and only want to return it to this list if the column name is different than the target. So this will just generate you a list of all columns without the target column. Let me do it one a little bit smaller. Okay, then if we'll essentially have a button, so you'll be able to upload the data, make your selections, and then you'll be able to press a button to confirm the selection. And this you do very simple. You say if st button, this will generate us a button, confirm selection. So if the user has confirmed the selections, um, we need to check, let's check if the user has selected some features. If not, we'll just print out an error saying, please select at least one feature. Of course, we, we cannot train a data model without any features. Okay, then else we will say, st.session, so here a user has selected everything correctly. We will just say st.session state. 
feature features equals features st.session state target equals target and st. let's say success features and target variable selected successfully okay let's see if this works now here we have our application let's refresh it go to upload data upload the same data set as before preview if the data is working and here our we have a type error data type categorical not understood so this must be coming from here and it's because i think the data type is not called categorical it's called category here we have a category okay let's try it once again refresh first off let's see i didn't upload any data so now i would expect a warning please upload a data set first so this is working let's upload the data here let's go to select features and here we can see it essentially we have to select the sepal length width, length or width of the petals and what we see we don't have uh, the possibility our preview is gone we don't have the possibility to select this species, which is a categorical variable. This is what we wanted. Select features, and then out of features here, we can select everything except for the sepal length, and we can select multiple options. So confirm selection, features and target variable selected successfully. Okay, that's good. So what we can do next is work on our model training. So I will go down here. And we will now write all the code that we need to train our models. Now, in order not to make this file super big, I will just create a new file, call it trainmodels.py. And in this file, we will write all of our code that will be necessary to train our models. So this will be all inside of a function, train models. Now, this function, for here, we will need a few imports, but this we will deal with later. First off is we need Streamlit. So import Streamlit as ST, once again. If we already have Streamlit right here, what we can say is we need to read in our variables. So we say df equals st.session state. And then we are reading in our data frame. We are reading in our features. So I can just, what I can just do is go ahead here, copy this, then you are hitting control plus D, and then you are saying features, right? And then you are going back down and we are doing the same thing to our target. Now we'll define our X and Y matrices. So F, uh, so X is our features and Y is our target. So now let's split the data, right? And for the split of the data, we want to give the user the possibility to define how big the testing set should be, right? So what we will do is create a slider and we will also learn how to do a slider in Streamlit. And this is super simple. You say st.slider. Um, let's call it test size. And this comes in percent. So let's say percent here and the beginning value or the minimum value is 10 maximum value is 50 and the default is 20. you can of course set your own values these are just recommended by me and then the random state random state is used so that if the random state is the same the records will always the same records will always go to the same training or testing data set if you randomize the random state then they will go to different ones and for this we will use a number input that's called random state value of 42 will be the default and then the step is one you can do whatever you want of course here now that we have our split of testing and training set or at least we have the values that we will use to do this we can define our models so now the models oops i didn't want to run this the models here we will keep a dictionary of the models that will be used in your training. 
So you don't have to use all of them, but I would highly recommend uh, to kind of explore because the, they, these, are kind, these are interesting and these are the most popular. I will first make all the imports here. So I will say from sklearn.linear model, we will first import linear regression. And as I said, we will only be doing regression models for now as they are just less complex. From sklearn.ensemble, import random forest regressor. From sklearn.svm, import svr. So it's support vector regressor. From, or from, I meant, sklearn dot neighbors import chi neighbors regressor. I will for now copy them that we can use their names here down in the models. So what I will now say is linear regression will be an instance. So the model will keep the name of the model and then an instance of the model, right? So I will do the same with the random forest regressor right here. Also create an instance, the same with the SVR. Or we can maybe spell it out because it's a support vector regressor. That's, it's clear for the user, support vector regressor. So SVR, let's create also an instance and then K neighbors regressor. So it's K nearest neighbors regressor. And also let's create an instance. Okay, this is good. Next, um, let's give an option to the user to select the models. So I will just say selected models because the user can train one model, can train all the models that they see here. So let's create this multi-select, select models to train. And the number of options will be, will generate it by here inputting a list of keys from the dictionary above. Move the empty lines here. And then the default, uh, so as the default, we will use all the options. So I will just say default equals the same essentially. So list models dot keys. This should give the user an option to select all the models now. Then let's create a button. So the user will select the models, they will select a test size, a random state, and now we will do everything here after they press the button. So if the button to train models is pressed. First off, let's check if the user has selected so any models. If not, let's print out an error. Please select at least one model to train. If they selected something, we will perform a train test split. So I will say xtrain. And for this, we will utilize an sklearn function that will import in a second. Important is that you for now keep the order of the variables here the same. So x train x test, y train, y train, y test. And then we will import a function called train test split. We will import it from sklearn.model selection import train test split. This function allows you based on your inputs to split to split your data set into a training and testing X and Y sets. So we will just use it, train test split. Inside it, we will put our X, our Y, our test size, which will be the selected test size divided by 100. And we will input our random state equal to the random state selected by the user. So that's good. This part we have created. Now we need to scale our features. So we need to perform something called feature scaling. This is very simple. Also in the sklearn, we have something called a standard scaler. So what I would say is from sklearn.preprocessing import standard import standard scaler. This will just put all of your variable variables on the same scale. So if you have something counted in millions or something counted just in one, two, three, four, five, 
this will allow you not one variable to overpower your model. So they will have an equal impact on the model. So our scalar is our standard scalar. And then we will just say X train, X train scalar fit transform, always on the training fit transform X train. So this will or calculate the values that the scalar needs in order to scale the variables and will transform our training set. And then on the testing set, we always only do transform. You cannot fit it to the testing set because theoretically this is data that you haven't seen yet at this point. Okay, we have the variables scaled. Let's now save them. So what we'll do is we will say is the session state x train equals x train. And then I will copy this, let's say five times. Here we will do x test. Here we will do y train, y test, with a small t. And here we will save the scalar, scalar. This is once again, the saving to the session state is so that we can later on um, change the navigation tabs without this being reset. After this is done, let's print out just a success state that the data, data was split into training and testing sets. Now let's train our models, trained models an empty, this will be an empty dictionary for now. And then for every model, so for model name in selected models, what we will do is we will say, first off, we will select the instance so out of this dictionary that we have created right here. We will select the model that we will be training in the current iteration, right? So we'll be iterating over the selected models. So here is where the user selected the models and we will be going with these model names over this models dictionary. And here, so here, this model for every instance will be, for every iteration, will be one of these selected right here. So for model, uh, every model, we will do a fit to the training set. So X tray y, y train. And then we will append it to the trained models. Or not append it, but create a key with a value of a fitted model. Then what we will do is save, after this is done, we will save our models inside our session state. So the trained models. And then we will just print out a success message to the user. All models have been trained. Okay, good. Let's now, this, this was a lot of work. Let's now, what we need to do is import this so we need to import it here in the we will go here at the top we will say from train models import train models function and here we will call this function instead right after we create this selection right here so if a user goes to the train models so if selection equals 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 let's see how we called it model training first of a header as usual train a machine say ml models now if the if we don't have a data frame, not in st.session state, or we don't have features, st.session state, or we don't have a target.
we will just display a warning. Please upload and select features first. Okay, now if we have it selected, what we will do is we will take our function and we will call our function right here. By the way, here it's showing me that there's a possibility of a warning. And if we go right here, yeah, we have a capital Y here. Let's change it to a smaller now. Everything should be fine and working. Okay, good. Let's see if this works now. So here's our application. Let's go to the home page. Let's refresh it. Here we can upload the data. This is still working. Select our features. Let's select like one. Confirm selection. Model training. Our slider is working. That's good. Selection of the random state working. We can change the things here. Selection of different models. Let's say trade models. Data was split into training and testing sets. All models have been trained. So this looks actually very, very good. Now let's say if we have actually done anything because so far we could have only displayed nicely looking text. So the next step is an exciting one. We will print out some charts that would show how our models perform. So here, if selection equals equals results, what we will do is as usual, let's start with a header model performance. If I could only spell correctly, performance results. So if we have trained models, this is a check that we usually do, right? To check our session state. If they are not in our session state, we want to display a warning to the user saying that they should please train models first. Else, if they trained the models already, we can begin the printing process. Now for this, we will also create a function. Um, the function will essentially allow us to print the same set of plots for every trained model. So first thing we need to do is I will just read in our trained models. So we will, I will read everything from this session state. Trained models. I will here, we'll do the same for our X test. So now we are, we'll be working with our testing set. Here are right, read in our X or our Y test. And I will now create this function. So here we will have a loop that will take model name and model. So this will iterate over our trained models dot items, right? So we will be getting from the trained models, we will be getting the model name and the actual model instance to do the predictions, right? So this is our dictionary that we have created and saved to the session state before that in the trained models function. So now here we want to create our function. So let's go in here, let's create a new file. For now, I will just say pass here to, so that it doesn't show up as red. I'll say print chart.py and inside this print chart dot pi. We will import stringlet as usual, but we have uh, access to it. We will start with a subheader, right? Because we need to know the model name. Let's do an f string instead of an s string. Let's do model name. Before we do so, let's of course wrap this inside a function. The function will take a model name and model instance. Okay, now we start with a subheader. Let's generate predictions. So this is where we are using our model to do the predictions. All the models in sklearn have the predict method, so we don't have to worry. We will be predicting on x test. And of course, then we need to add this x test here as a dependency. We will also need a y test. Okay, so the x test now has been here. We will first generate a very 
common measure will generate an R2 score, so R squared score. Now for this, we'll need to import it. So we also do it very simple, sklrn.metrics. We'll import R2 score. So our R2 score, uh, then you calculate it very simple. You just say R2 or whatever the name variable name you want to use is an R2 score that scores the Y test against our predictions. So it takes the real data and then compares them to the predicted data and then tells you how much of the variance you have explained. Then we'll calculate a mean squared error. Mean squared error you also import from here. So we can now do it like this. You import mean squared error. This allows you to, for example, do something like this, to move it to multiple lines. And then you say here mean squared error, and then you also say y test and y pred for your predictions. It will calculate the mean squared error of the predictions. Now root mean squared error, you say np, and np is of course the common alias for numpy. So a numpy dot sqrt, so the square root msc, because root mean squared error is a root over the mean squared error. Let's print out all the statistics. So st.write. Now here using an f string, we will say asterisk asterisk to make it look a little bit nicer. R squared score is here we will do an asterisk asterisk and then we will do an R2 and we will just display it nicely as like 2f to have two decimal places. Now let's copy this. We will do a mean squared error, mean squared error. I will display here the mean squared error. Let's paste once again and we will do a root mean squared error. Here, let's fix the Q. Root mean squared error. And now here are our MSC. Okay, so this will print out the statistics that we have just calculated. Now let's create a residual plot. So it's actually the differences between your predictions and your tests, thing set values. So you know, first off, let's calculate them. So residuals will be just y test minus y, y pred. Then the figure. Three, layer three on it, we will now use a matplotlib. So here I will just go ahead and say import matplotlib as plt. I will also import seaborn that will allow us to generate nice looking graphics as SNS and I will also import plotly.express as px. I think this is quite nice that you get an overview of the different ways that you can uh, create the graphs and, and charts here. So matplotlib.subplot subplots to create many different plots here. And then seaborn, so SNS scatterplot, where the x uh, will be our y preds, y will be residuals, y equals residuals, and then our axis will be our axis 3. Or we will put this as a subplot on the AX3. Then we will just modify it. So here, essentially now, we will be playing around with all of these plots. You will see the final result, but if you want to change something up here, feel free. Right, so I'll just say AX, H line, 0, make it nice red in color, and then the line style will be a dotted line. Then uh, let's set some labels. So set work X label, predicted, predicted values, X3 dot sets Y label, residuals, X3 dot set title residual 
res intro al plot st.pyplot to generate the plot fig3. Okay, let's now take a look how this looks like. So in our application, we need to refresh the application, upload the data once again, select our features, confirm selection, go to our model training, train the models, go to results. Now, model performance results show us nothing, and this is absolutely understandable because we have not called the function here. So let's say here from print chart import print chart. Let's go down here. So for every model name, we will be printing the charts. There we said that it takes model name, model, x test, and y test. So let's say like this, this will input all of our uh, values right here. And this now, if we go back to our application, refresh it. Once again, go ahead here, upload the data. So by the way, here, if you take a look at the data preview, you will now see what the session state is doing. So we are never saving the data preview, right? Uh, we are never sa saving that it should be displayed. If we go, uh, if I now go to select features and go back to upload data, that preview is gone. So maybe that's a feature you can implement that it's still kept, right? Just save in session state that the data is uploaded. And if the data is uploaded, or this you'll have already saved. So if the data is in the session state, just generate the overview here, always. Confirm selection, doesn't really matter. We just want to check if everything there works. And now the results. Um, that the module matplotlib has no attribute subplots. And this is quite simple. I forgot that here I need to go to pyplot. So once again, let's go through all the steps. Let's refresh it. But you, you could already see that the where to calculate there well, were calculated properly. Select features. Doesn't matter. Model training. Let's train our models and the results here. And we can see a nice residual plot where our predicted values is somewhere here, our residuals is here. So this really currently doesn't matter for the for the linear regression. So we have, I think, selected there only one, um, only one value to be predicted. And here what we can see is our random forest regressor, our support vector regressor, and our k nearest neighbors. Now, what perhaps may be a little bit weird to you is that we only see kind of two predicted values, uh, or rather, we only see two predictions, is because of how our data set looks like. So if we, if I go back to our uh, testing set right here, you can see directly here that it only has 10 records. So the testing set has 10 records. Therefore, if we, in the feature selection, I'll just go over it once again, confirm the selection in the model training. If we increase the test size, let's say to 50%, of course, this will probably decrease the performance of our models. We'll go to train models and to results. We'll see now five different predictions and we'll see also the zero zero line. This is the red line that we have generated. We can see these all squared. So for example, for the linear regression, we have 77% of variance explained, random forest 59, SVR zero, 63 and then k nearest neighbors not doing very well okay let's now create one more graph and the graph i want to create is a feature importance graph and not all models have it therefore let's check if a model has attribute let's use a has attribute this will allow us to check if an object has an attribute let's say model and what we are looking for is the coefficient key. If it has it, it means that it has. you can see a feature importance. So how important to every prediction or how much impact a change in the our feature variable makes on the target variable. So let's generate here the importances model.coef to extract the coefficients, feature names, 
we have of course saved in our session state features and now let's say feature or feature importance data frame is our data frame we will just create a data frame this is how you create a data frame in pandas or one of the many ways to do it out of an object here well the columns will be feature and the feature will call come from feature names and of course here pandas is shouting at us because we have not imported here in this function now it's all good feature names and then second column coefficients will be of course here you need the column and here you need the column importances okay and then we will just say sort values by coefficient let's make sure that it's the same yep coefficient and then we wanted to have it descending because of course the bigger the coefficient the more important it is now to plot it will be super simple we just say px so we will just use this our plotly express bar it will be a bar chart where we'll print out the contents of our data frame X axis will be a feature, Y will be a coefficient, and then the title will be feature coefficients. As that of plotly chart fig four. Okay, now let's see if this has worked. We are in our application. Let's go to home, let's refresh it. Let's upload the data set, select features, let's go do all, all, let's do these two, doesn't matter, model training, let's train the models. We can increase the test size maybe. Let's train the models and let's go to our results. So we have our plots that we already had, right? And here we are generating, of course, the linear, for linear regression, it allows us to generate the feature coefficients and we can see like that the petal width has a coefficient of 0.4, sepal width of 0.03. And of course, for the other models, we don't have it. They are not so explainable as the linear regression. One more thing I would highly recommend is to deploy this application so that everyone can access it. It's not on your local host. You can put the link in your CV. It's very simple. But we need to put this code in our GitHub repository. So how you do it, of course, is you go to GitHub, you set up a repository. Once you do it, you will see something like this. So I'll just copy this line and now let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Now, in Visual Studio Code, what you have to say is git init to initialize a git repository. Of course, you need to have the repository or git downloaded. If you don't have git downloaded, go to Google, say download git, download git. Now, after you've done that, Let's say git remote at origin. This is what we copied. And this has now added, uh, connected our local repository to the remote repository. Afterwards, you say just git add, git commit. So to post a commit message, let's say first commit, and then git push. It will display you a message like this, copy, paste this. This is to connect our origin branch to the master branch. And this has now been pushed. Let's go back to our application right now. What you want to do in your application, go in here, go to your home, click on deploy. Click on deploy now, and this will take you to the streamlet.io page. After you are here, continue to a sign-in process, and this is a very standard sign-in process. I will leave you a link to a video in the description where I explain how to do it step by step. It's also showing up in your screen right now. So you just sign in here. You have to have your account on Streamlit connected to your GitHub account for this to work. So after you log in, you should see something like this, right? Where you have your repository, your branch, your main file path, and then you just click deploy. Nice thing about this is that Streamlit will recognize that we are using ppnv and will also use ppnv to manage all the dependencies. There will be a little bit of loading time uh, where you will just say see that your app is in the oven you usually have to wait like this for a few minutes if you are waiting longer like let's say half an hour and this is still loading 
uh, just try to do it once again if it doesn't uh, help sometimes pushing it once again to git helps but i will see you once our application is deployed and what we can see now is our deployed application it's in a public url so everyone can access it right now you can still upload your data set train your models and do whatever you want here inside now this publicly deployed and available application thank you for watching hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this if you like the video hit the like button and share it with your friends and you can watch the next video which is similar to this one that is currently displaying on your screen see you in the next video